Well, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board, Board of Health, Sewer Commissioner meeting of April 9th, 2024 at 416 p.m. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with opportunity for in, both in-person attendance in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and participation is being provided as a courtesy to public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should plan to for an in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. Pursuant to General Laws Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record this meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, so I'm calling the meeting to order. Public comment. Is there any public comment? Nope. Okay, first item on the agenda, we are skipping over the Deerfield Elementary School um, entry project. It's not ready for us to um, sign yet. It will be on our next agenda. Fuel storage certificate fee uh, increase and review. And Cassie, can you introduce yourself and uh, sure. explain why we're the five dollars just isn't adequate anymore. It is not. Uh, my name is Cassie Sanderell. I'm the town clerk. Um, and in preparing this year's um, fuel storage certificates, um, I realized that the fee of five dollars for preparing the certificates, mailing them, return, getting them returned, um, processing, um, and filing, five dollars did not co cover right. um, the cost. So I took the survey. Um, from 2023, um, right. and I took 23 communities um, who uh, represent uh, communities closest to our population, um, yep. 23 of them, and um, took the average, and the average was actually pretty much exactly $25. So um, the uh, fees ranged predominantly from 10 to 50, um, some <coughs> 75, and even some 500. Um, so 25 seemed fair. Do you think that does, in fact, cover the cost? Yeah, so I mean, I wonder if we'll I mean, be back at it in like three years because everybody else adjusted. Right. Um, I well, guess like, how, just for an example, when you say um, you mail it out, you um, expect it back, mm -hmm. and I mean, are you spending 15, 20 minutes on a per certificate, or um, how much of your time? Not quite, probably. Um, I have uh, letters that I amend each year. Um, to prepare and the certificate. Um, so, I, but I guess with the time um, when the certificates are returned to process the payment and to record the certificates, probably a total of 15, maybe 20 minutes. So 25 sounds reasonable then. That's good. So. You, you feel comfortable yeah. with 25? Not 35? can always 35? visit it again. No. Okay. Why don't you just keep an eye on it and if you feel that the 25 is not covering your time and the postage and everything else, um, just, I mean, you've been pretty good about coming and updating yep. our fees, so good. just kind of keep an eye on this okay. kind of stuff. Sure. We'd appreciate it. So I'll take a motion if there's no other discussion. Make a motion to approve the fee uh, change to $25 for uh, fuel storage uh, certificate fee. Second. Uh, is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim L. G. I. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carlin S. I. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very Ken. much. Thank you for paying attention to this. Get out and enjoy that weather. Yes. Rain for five days. Um, <laughs> you got to pay for it some way or another. And, and we have uh, Christopher here, who is probably going to talk to us about the Elm Street Complete Streets application. So excited to see this on the agenda. Yes, this is moving forward. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, and I've, I've actually got a couple other items as well. Okay. Um, so I don't know if we want to start with uh, the shared streets and spaces and the sidewalk project on North Main. Sure. Okay. So we'll, let me just share this really quick um, so everyone can see kind of the project areas we're talking about here. You know what, Christopher, uh, can you just introduce yourself and can oh, yeah, you speak into the yeah, mic sure. just a dash more because 
uh, we want to make sure people can hear you. Sure. Because this is pretty exciting, actually. <laughs> Great. Yeah, Christopher Dunn, uh, Planning and Economic Development Coordinator for the Town of Deerfield. Uh, and let me share my screen here so everyone can take a look at this. All right. And then uh, put that in slideshow. Okay. That's about as good as I can get it for the moment. Okay. Um, so real quick background here. So uh, for the sidewalk project, this came up at the last CCI meeting. Um, so I know uh, Kevin had gotten, I believe about $250,000 for sidewalk improvements on North Main Street uh, over the last few years. Right. Okay. I think it, it got to a certain point in the planning process last year and then kind of needed to be revised and then he went back to GZA, the consultant who's been doing the design work, uh, and they came up with a v revised design. Um, and we're positioned now to, to use that design and go for an invitation for bids uh, this spring, and FERCOG has been helping us pull together those procurement documents. So real quick, uh, what you see on the left there, I think you can see it okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is... That's North Main from Pleasant to Jackson Street. Yep. Uh, so on the east side of the road, that's the side of the road with the, the Bloody Brook Monument. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the idea would be to go as far as we can, essentially, in redoing the sidewalks. Um, so the bid is structured uh, to maximize linear feet repaved. Um, I'll, it'll, a few slides down, I'll show you what the, the basic specs look like uh, so you can get a sense of that. That'd be great. And then on the other side, on the west side, uh, Kevin was looking to just do from Pleasant Street basically up to the uh, Frontier Regional School there, um, so a much shorter distance. Um, and that's, that's the biggest part of the project area. And then I would just real quick zoom in on a separate but very related project. Uh, the Shared Streets and Spaces grant that uh, we received last year, we were looking to use that to do some uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons at some of our crosswalks around the schools. Mm -hmm. um, so that zoomed in area you can see that's right in front of uh, Frontier Regional. There's uh, three crosswalks there that would be restriped. Uh, we would be adding some ADA ramps as well and then also those rectangular flashing beacons there. Um, there are also plans to do uh, restriping and an additional couple beacons at the crosswalk at Pleasant Street. Um, so that's currently, we have a, a crossing guard there, um, and I was out there with Kevin and the chief the other day, and we determined that, you know, it could be done, and with a little bit, little bit of grass added here and there, <laughs> there would be space for those uh, rapid flashing beacons and signs. So, okay. So we'll, I'll mention that a little bit later as well. More grass, the better. And yeah. So much are asshole. they, um, are they yeah. activated by hand? Can you press a button? That's the idea. You, you yeah. come up to them and... You press a button and then they start flashing and Let then you're know. good to cross the street. Yep. That's great. Yep. Yeah, because you can't, so a lot of times you just can't see, especially at night, it's so helpful to have a visual aid that somebody's there. Yep, yeah, they're great. Yeah, I, I know I just stopped the other day for a gentleman on 5 and 10 here because he yeah. pressed the button and they started flashing and otherwise never would have seen him. So. Right, right. Yeah. Great. Um, I did awesome. want to mention beyond the work on North Main, uh, the IFB includes this stretch in front of the Polish Club as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not sure of the history there, but it sounds like there's been a need to, to improve that sidewalk. We've been yeah. getting requests quite a bit because it, it kind of just seems like the street and kids travel and walk there and eventually love to get downtown done, but one step at a time. Yeah. 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 No, this we'll has, been, has been brought to our attention for several years to address that. A lot of times snow gets built up at the end as well in the winter. So it, really it's really a safety that. issue Yeah, yeah. Um, for kids uh, yeah. and especially the smaller kids because you can't, it, I mean this year we had no real snow but sometimes the snow banks are very high and the kids, you can't, can't see, see them, them can't yeah. see the kids. Yep. 
That'd be so, great. So it would be wonderful. Thank you. Great. Yeah. So other than uh, those sections of North Main, this is the only other section of sidewalk contemplated in this IFB. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll just real quick just show you what I was talking about on North Main and Pleasant. So imagine those triangles are not just triangles. They're actually... Uh, you know those flashing beacons yep. um, so that's the location we'd be looking at and you can see kind of behind on the right there that orange strip that's the the start of the sidewalk project yep. at that location uh, and then on the other side there's a bit of purple as well so I had a question I know that's the entrance for the farmers quite a bit of big equipment coming in and out of that area uh, is there enough room to put a post there so that is that's actually precisely why we went out there with Kevin and the chief um, yeah. so uh, John Glinsky was there just oh, to good. check and see hey can I <laughs> yeah. make my way around this right those beacons can be installed about five feet off of the crosswalk okay. um, so with that he said yeah a right turn shouldn't be a problem that right. should be perfectly fine okay yep just want to make sure he was all set thank you thank you for um Talking to John Golinski. Oh, happy to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it was, uh, was it I believe John it was Chief Pacheco who pointed out, hey, we yeah. better check in with John. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, we want to be supportive of Golinski's farm as much as possible. Yeah, and, a farm and stand right there. So it's yeah, not uh, So it is. It's good to, to know that. Great. Thank you, Christopher, for yeah. making sure. Happy to do it. And then just real quick, here's up at uh, North Main and, and Ple or it should, it should just say North Main and. Um, uh, Frontier Regional there, not yep. Pleasant. Um, but those are the locations of the proposed uh, flashing beacons. And then that crosswalk there is also what would be improved. And you can see the on the uh, right-hand side that kind of those orange strips, yep. uh, they're a little bit tough to see. That's where the, the sidewalk would be improved yeah. as well. That's great. Um, so that's a, the basic um, project area. Um, and again, you know, Kevin had kind of structured the bid, so we'll see how far we can go north on North Main, um, but it'll certainly overlap with the shared streets project. So we're hoping there's going to be an opportunity for some cost savings and some well coordination between the two um, projects. I think if we have to prioritize, I really want us to do some on South Main in front of the Polish Club up to the cross crossing. I mean, we have seriously had complaints yeah. for years, and it is, in my mind, it is dangerous. We'll see when the bids come back, I guess. Let yeah. Us know yeah. What we need to do. So yeah. the, um, the, the the Polish club area that's in the bid, right? It is. Yes. Right. And yep. the other one, we just, you know, if we get lucky and they want to go a lot further, we're going to have to limit the distance they go on the North Main Street side because when we get down to the center of town. You know, yeah. we, we may have different goals with cement rather than asphalt. And Correct. Yep. Correct. Yeah, so so as it's structured currently, they're just starting at Pleasant Street and going north. They're not touching anything south of that okay. um, in front of the town campus or anything. Right. Obviously, that needs a, a very serious intervention, but that's a for sure. project for another day. Yep, yep. That sounds right. really good. Thank you. And just real quick, here are the, the specs for the sidewalk. Um, so you can see most of it's going to be... Uh, I'm never, <laughs> never sure how to say it, so I'll just call it Portland concrete. Yeah. Um, you know, going up to uh, basically the um, concrete sidewalk right before the ADA ramp. So most of this will be uh, Portland cement, and then you'll have um, you know actual concrete right where the it meets the street or the driveway. Yeah. Um, and that's that's good news in that uh, I know. Kevin was also pointing out the price of concrete has just skyrocketed so <laughs> for the last couple months, unfortunately. So uh, we're still planning to do asphalt, but when we come to road intersections and exactly that's when we yep. transition yep. to concrete. Exactly. So asphalt up until uh, you have this uh, concrete here, right right before the um, ADA ramp. Okay. Yep. 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 Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, concrete. I I think is now from a, like a hundred and sixty three bucks to almost five hundred dollars. Yep. Why so I mean, much? Yeah. It doesn't just really jump because they can. It's terrible. Isn't that fun? I mean, it's literally not that. I don't know. It just seems well, like it's just all building expensive. costs went up, so yeah, I know, they figured they could do it too. I yeah, guess. sure. 
So anyway, that's the, the sidewalk and the okay. shared streets projects. Right. Any questions at this point? No. No. Nope. Okay, Thanks. great. So I'll be, I'll be working with Kevin and Andrew Woods at FERCOG just to get that bit out the door. Great. And, uh, great. you know, hopefully we'll be able to get, do a pretty good stretch in North Maine. Yeah, that'd be, you know. that'd be great. Um, and then real quick, uh, in terms of, <laughs> so we talked about the things we're already doing, uh, something that's been talked about for a long time, Complete Streets Project on right. Elm Street. Um, I just wanted to give a little kind of reminder because there's a long history of this stuff. Um, so back in 2013, I think they first started convening conversations, and I'm sure someone will tell me, no, we really started 20 years before that. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, af after that, I know that the town really got serious about going through this complete streets process. We got a policy adopted. We had a prioritization plan created. Um, and then things kind of came to a halt with the pandemic. Um, and so one of my pet projects has been, hey, let's revive this and try to start moving forward, particularly given that the Leary lot is poised for completion this summer. Yep. That'll really allow us to do more on our, our streets because we'll make sure there's plenty of parking for everyone. Right. Um, and I know kind of back of the napkin analysis we did was, uh, it, you know, it shows about 100 public parking spots downtown and after the Leary lot. Even if the state takes away their parking on Sugarloaf and, and Park, we'll still have 100, so yeah, we're that's good great. there. Yeah. Um, so Elm Street is kind of the, the third project on uh, that list of priorities. The other yeah. two have to do with the town common, which obviously we're continuing to work with Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design Group on. This is kind of the area um, that we're looking at. Uh, so it's Elm Street from Maine to, the, to Railroad Street. Um, so on the map there, you can see that triangle yeah. there is the common, and uh, yeah. at the end there is Hampshaws. So I reached out to Ty and Bond. They had completed our prioritization plan back in 2020, so they were kind of most familiar, and they're also um, pre-qualified with MassDOT for this work, so that's, that's an important consideration with Complete Streets applications. Um, they put together a couple very high-level uh, cross-sections of Elm Street. Um, this is the existing conditions on Elm Street, so you can right. see the angled parking that we have on the north side of the street, yep. and then narrow sidewalks on either side. And so the prioritization project is not, uh, you know, it didn't outline exactly what to do here, but it just said, hey, let's reuse some of that right away for pedestrians, trees, for sure. bikes, or something other than Big angled tables. parking. Yeah. So they had a, a handful of alternatives here, um, and I won't get too deep into any of these because they're just you know cross sections for illustrative purposes. But um, you know you have one option where you're just widening the sidewalk substantially. Restaurants might like that for having some, some yeah. dining space, etc. For sure. Uh, another option with some kind of a more of a tree belt uh, on the north side of Elm Street. I like that too. And then they had some options. To, um, with bike lanes. Um, I will say, I don't think in our prioritization plan it actually considered bike lanes for Elm Street. Right, no, it typically go on the other one, way. One interesting point to consider, though, um, is uh, Elm Street's gonna be need repaving at some point soon. Very soon. If you do put bike lanes on there, complete streets could potentially cover some of that. Okay. Um, so that's something to think about. Yep. Um, and then they had another design with, um, you know, that kind of center turning lane. Yeah. Um, so personally, you know, I'm, I certainly tend towards these first two with the wider sidewalk and uh, tree. Alternate two looks good to me. So we were talking with Ty and Bond about, you know, well, what's the next step here? There are opportunities for construction funding grant applications coming up May 1st, which is right around the corner, um, but also October 1st. Um, and the nice thing about October 1st is we can have, you know, take these, have a conversation with our business owners, our residents, and say, hey, here's what we're thinking. Don't worry about the parking. We've thought that through. Yep. And, you know, what do you like and what should we be thinking about when we um, move forward with these? So, yeah. so I wanted to just kind of put that out there. Okay. Um, Great. And then uh, here's kind of an overall proposed approach. Uh, so, you know, spend some time engaging with these businesses this summer to make sure they're aware of this plan. Um, you know, one other way to defray some of these costs is to look at, uh, and, and Tim will smile because I've mentioned this grant program a couple times, uh, the Municipal ADA Improvement uh, Fund. 
Um, so that includes anything that was in our ADA transition plan, which we completed back in 2020. Big part of that plan was improving our sidewalks so that they're more accessible. Yep. Um, so that could, could take a chunk out of sidewalk improvements potentially. Um, and then, you know, another important aspect of this is survey work. Um, so I know with the Leary Lot project, um, for a little bit, Jeff was looking at, you know, including some improvements to sidewalks on Elm Street in that. Right. There just is very little in terms of survey work that's already been completed and is up to date yeah. for that area. Right. Um, so we have to consider, you know, can we complete some of that work while we're still finalizing, you know, what our design is going to be. Yep. The town appropriated $40,000 for complete streets a few years ago. Yes. Um, that's sat untouched to right. this point. Um, I would suggest that's probably a good place to start. Yeah. Um, and I can reach out to the CIPC or whoever, you know, to make sure everyone's on board with that approach. Yeah. Um, that was that 40 was originally to start the design of the common, and then right. we, we ended up realizing we couldn't use it because it was state stuff. But yeah, there is there's places to use that for sure. That's the whole intent. It's great. I, yeah. I think it's really important to engage people again because yeah. we've had too much time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so we need public input again. So if you want to do the outreach, I'm thrilled to death for that. And Great. Love yeah. the, uh, love the it, idea of greening and a tree belt and like. Yeah. I me just too. But a bunch of old photos. It'd, it'd be nice if we could find a way to actually get the stuff built, so we don't yeah. wait until the summer of 2025 to have it done. Um, I know if we always want things done tomorrow, but um, yeah, that's just my two cents. Mm -hmm. Faster is better. <laughs> Agreed. I think, uh, you know, the timeline I'm laying out here would have construction spring, summer 2025. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's just what I'm looking at, if, given the, the grant funding opportunity is October yeah, yeah, 1st. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I hear you, Tim. I, I get you. Sounds good. Um, so anyway, that's that's all I had. Any other questions from the select board at this point? No, nope. thank you. Okay, thank you great. for your work on that. That's I will keep work. you updated beyond that. Perfect. Christopher, right. thank you for staying late. Oh, it's not late at all. It's like nine minutes past when I normally leave. So, <laughs> well, you're efficient. So, you're, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, we can slide out now and yes. let, the, let the finance come in. That's to encourage people to want to leave early. <laughs> Work efficiently. Well, tonight we have a personnel committee at 6, so we are going to be done by 6, regardless of whether we're done. Um, so let's open the finance committee meeting for April 9th, 2024 at 4.40 p.m. Um, sadly, Jim Cambius is not here today. Somebody needs to take minutes. Any volunteers? I'm going to be away. Right, Maybe David can can't hear in. you. I can. I'll, huh? Does David want to do it? <laughs> Did you volunteer? I'm not hearing you very well. But, um, oh, sorry. Is this better? That's all right. Yeah. And my apologies for not being here. I just I'm on that personnel at six, and that's always remote. So ah, I didn't okay. want to be. Delaying that one, running back home. Got it. Okay. 
Um, so we have minutes from April 1st. Does anybody like to make a motion to recommend the minutes or pass or whatever we do with the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 1st meeting. All right, do we have a second? Second that. Okay. Any discussion? No, nope. we will need to do a roll call vote since we're hybrid. So let's start down here with John. I approve. Uh, Mark Brennan, I. Uh, Beth Brown, abstain. Julie Chalf and I. Dave Sharp, abstain. So that's 302. I can do that. I can do it. I'll type. You got it. You run. Okay. Um, all right. I got that for you. Start. I'm going to start from right there because that's what I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay. So the minutes are approved. So next on the agenda is reviewing individual line items. This is a reminder where we left at last meeting is that we asked that we leave at least two hundred thousand dollars in free cash. Um, and we asked the accountant and administrator and select board to go off and look at that. I don't think we're quite to that point yet, but we have a couple that we want to look at now, and then we'll look at the rest of them oh, we next week can. unless. Yep. Okay. Um, I did not print new sheets, though. Okay. So, um, sorry, Julie, I thought when you and I talked, we were just going to go through the um, warrant, so I apologize. Oh. Sorry, um, I might have messed you up there. There, there was a um, suggested reduction in select board staff salaries, and I can print these for you for next week. Um, but uh, Casey and I were looking at the part-time assistant in their office, and by going down to 16 hours a week from 18, that saved us. Uh, Casey, you want to confirm? I think it was $2,569. Yeah, I'm not ignoring you. My computer's coughing the curveball off. Um, what did you Yeah, it's right around there. Yeah. What, what was that, Casey? I missed it. It's Casey. about $2,600. I don't have the, I don't have my sheet in front of me. I'm sorry. Yep, select board staff salaries. So, do you have going the account from, number? I do not have a sheet. Do you have the account number? Uh, it's 122-5110. Thank you. So if you take 2569 from that a number, it gives us 378,497. And that was, like I said, that was just going from 18 hours a week to 16 hours a week for the part-time admin support. Do you feel ready for us to vote on that this evening? Yeah, I do. Are you okay with that? Yeah, we, okay. we already actually voted on it. You did? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Do you on have our, a copy our, of it then? On our third. Well, yeah, we, we have voted to go they down. They talked about it at the last meeting. Oh, we didn't vote? Okay. We agreed to go down, though. I know that. You did agree to go down, yeah. Yeah, okay. so that ends up at 378,497. Would anybody like to make a motion to reduce select board staff salaries to 378,497? I'll make a motion to approve select board staff salaries account 122,5110 for $381,066. Uh, it's, it's a new number, 378,497. Oh, <laughs> okay, I would draw that motion. <laughs> I'll okay. make a motion that we uh, recommend select board staff salaries uh, account number 122-5110 at 378,497. Second. All right. Any discussion? Um, it was okay. 381,066? Yeah. Correct. Okay. <laughs> And that would all come, the, the intent is that would come out of the part-time admin support. Yep, that, that lower, the lowest line item there on that. Okay. Yep. And what were the hours again? Uh, going from 16 down to, uh, excuse me, going from 18 down to 16. 18 to 16. 
Thank you. <clears throat> Any discussion? No, let's do a roll call vote, starting with John. Aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Beth Brown, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. It's sharp, aye. All right, that passes five zero zero. I would entertain a motion for the staff board, select board staff salary reduction. Make a motion to approve the select board staff salary uh, um, count one twenty two fifty one ten at three hundred seventy eight thousand four hundred ninety seven dollars. Second. All those in favor? Carolyn, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Uh, the next one is the Select Board Administration Expense, and that was reduced by $2,200 down to $19,000 even. And it sounds like Casey's printing some things. Um, we, sure. had, we looked at a few line items and felt that there were a few that could be reduced. Um, I believe we reduced training Oh, good. You, did you print it? Thank you. I'm so sorry I did not. Um, oh, great. Thank you. So, uh, meetings, we went down to 9,500. I, you Thank know, you. That, that makes it pretty tight, um, particularly if we end up going to a per diem uh, uh, reimbursement and mm -hmm. everyone submits. <laughs> <laughs> But I think it is doable, and then we went down to three thousand for training, and one thousand for postage. And we were mainly looking at history as well as what we've spent so far this year. And uh, dues went down to three thousand, so so that brings us down to nineteen thousand total, and that felt like a very comfortable number. Great. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve select board and administrative expense count 122 5400 for $19,000. Do we need to end to retract the prior approval? Do you need to say something like no, that? No, I don't think so. Okay. So we haven't been doing that, so. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Oh, good. You already did that, but I just didn't hear you. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on that? All right, uh, roll call vote. John, would you like to start? Aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Beth Brown, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. Amy Sharp, aye. That passes 5 zero, zero. Make a motion to approve the revised uh, Select Board of Administration expense account 122-5400 in the amount of $19,000. Second. Second. All those in favor? Carolyn Ness, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. So for the minutes, the, the sheet says select board and administrator expense, but we're calling it select board administration expense. Yeah, right? that's been changed. Uh, yeah. So when we print it the next time, you'll be able to see that. Excellent. Thanks. Administration expense. Okay. Then uh, the last one that the select board um, had uh, control over, um, that they that they actually submitted was Council on Aging, and that was 541-5400. Um, the suggestion for that was to go down to 250. We haven't been spending it, but um, felt that that was that was reasonable. Oh, where'd you get that? Casey oh. provided it last week, but I don't know that we voted on it. I think we just okay. had it for consideration. So, well, the the finance committee had voted it at four hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, the request was for five hundred, and it, you know, that was just because mm -hmm. we've been requesting five hundred, thinking that um, the council on aging was going to do some things. Um, but when Casey and I were looking at it, we decided that we could go down to two fifty, and that still gives them a little bit of money in case they do spend it. Or dues or whatever. 
I, I would be so supportive of 250. I, I, I think we have to leave some in there for mailings or, you know, I mean, just we don't, we can't anticipate how active they are going to be. And, and that was why we raised it originally from two five hundred because there was some discussion of more activity. Um, but the senior center, truthfully, has been so active that the Council on Aging hasn't really kicked in. But on the other hand, um, I'm still optimistic that there is going to be some activity maybe. So I, I feel comfortable with 250. Do you guys want to vote it and make sure you're okay with it first yep. and then we'll... I'll make, go ahead, Kevin. I'll make, make a motion to approve the Council on Aging um, 541-5400 at $250. Second. All those in favor? Carolyn Ness, aye. Tim Hill, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. All right. Do we have a motion from fund income? I'll make a motion to uh, recommend $250 for the Council on Aging. Count 541-5400. Second. Any discussion? Uh, let's do a roll call vote. Beginning with John. Aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Beth Brown, aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. If Sharp, aye. aye. That passes 500. Zero, zero. Okay. So, out of all of those budgets that uh, brought us down $4,919. And we're shooting for something in the neighborhood of 30,000 yeah. reduction? Yeah. Is that? Is there a discussion so, about scams or? No, what we were going to do was move the capital project for the school flooring to next to the fiscal year 26 from fiscal year 25. Mm -hmm. So that would reduce the bottom line by, what was it, Mark? It's 27. It was, it was at 127900 for those four capital items, and if you take that one out, um, that one was 26400 So that brings us down to capital projects of 101500 Yeah. Right. I, I, I believe that's correct. Yeah, it's okay. 26 four. <clears throat> And what, what, what did we save so far? Uh, Four thousand nine hundred nineteen dollars. Um, Casey and I had some recommendations for some of the uh, miscellaneous budgets to be reduced, but Thank you. we didn't feel like we should do that until we had a chance to talk with those uh, committees, like you know, conservation commission, historical commission, energy committee, one of those. Um, and that might save us another couple thousand dollars. Um, but that is as far as we were yep. able to go. Thank you so much, Casey. Um, um, Didn't that roughly get us to the 200,000 in? It, it did, yeah. oh yes, yeah. and, and we have a little bit to spare there now, now with those changes, and especially if SCIMS has gone down some, um, Josh was just trying to call me. I uh, was trying to confirm that number, but uh, we'll, we'll deal with it. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, I did make a request um, to our police chief to see if he could find 5000 in his payroll budget, but, um, you know, the chief doesn't budget for full-time academy expenses, and there's a lot of payroll involved with somebody that goes to training for, for um, for that kind of work and he's down two people and and not only does he send that person to training for five months but then he also has to have somebody has him okay. shadow that person another uh, policeman for another couple of months so he was not comfortable giving up any of his money he, he just felt like that that wasn't doable um we've already discussed a lot of the other budgets casey and i you know we're just putting our heads together, trying to figure out where else we could find money. If we were to, um, I don't know, Casey, do you, if you wanted to address it or you want me to, but a um, couple of suggestions. You want me to go ahead? There's more than one way you can address it. Um, Casey, we can't really hear you. Casey, we can't hear you. Your mic, your mic isn't working well for some reason. I'm right. 
<laughs> so there's more than one thing you can address, but there isn't a lot of fluff in the budget. One thing that I've heard a member of the select board mention before is to reduce the number of days the transfer station is open. Um, if we reduced it by one day, that saves us about seven grand. Oh, that's not a savings. Yeah, I, I, we're, not we're, a we're, that's not a savings, Casey. Well, we were, I mean, we're looking at anything, Carolyn, just to try to get us. I know. You know so the, so that would save us about $7,000. Right. Be quite the uproar, though. Um, I think that a lot. When it was still cutting, we were, feel like we're at the number we need to be. Yeah. yeah. I think that the um, concern was how much free cash we're using for the omnibus budget. Well, and and I know um, I there's only so much we can, we, uh, so much blood you can get out of a turnip. I get it, um, but we were just shooting for other ideas because at one point in time we were talking about thirty thousand dollars. So we were trying to figure out where else we could. Spend. I know. You know, the other thought was snow and ice. You know. Do, do we need to be plowing in the middle of the night? Can we start plowing at 6 a.m. instead of, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just, just grasping at straws, really. Mm -hmm. How much money are we looking for? 20000 30. 30? Yeah, but we, we have come up with 30. Well, by, by asking the school to forego the, um, the project classroom work mm -hmm. uh, of the I think Trevor did. four hundred until the next, next fiscal yeah. year. Trevor did speak to Darius about that. Right, and he was okay with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can I can I ask? Sorry to be the dead horse, and sorry to not have been present. But um, when you talked about the school budget previously, did, was, did anybody do a sort of school choice um, analysis of that account and see where it's ending up? Well, when you were here last, David, uh, it was about a million fifty-four thousand, and and that's where it's at right now. But my recollection was that Darius was actually going to be spending more of that this spring, taking on some of those some of those things for the year. That that was my recollection is that it would be in the latter half or the latter quarter of this year. So I don't think he's actually gotten around to spending what he was intending to spend. So I, I'm guessing by the end of June, he's gonna be down some from, from that number. Um, but I think but the, the argument is that- all I can contribute to that. I'm sorry? That's about all I can contribute to that. That's, that's my recollection. I don't know if anybody else has that recollection, but that's, that's what I remember him saying. Um, uh, David, I, I think it, sometime after town meeting, sometime during the summer, I think it would be very important for us to have um, a discussion about school choice and how, um, because I worry, um, we're on the hook for 50% of the OPEP for Frontier. And when you get 40-ish percent school choice, we're running a lot of the school for, you know, the county. And, I, and I, there is a balance because you want kids to participate in programs and you want to offer programs and that also keeps kids in school. And, and, but that's why I feel like we have to have separate discussion and not just talk about school choice. What, what is the ramifications of continued trends of the high school choice coming in from Waitley and Conway and and how do we adjust um, the bills for, you know, like the regional school and stuff like that? Uh, not not a, uh, a critical one, but just let's put on the, 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 the ideas that are on the table and let's talk about them and then let's try to figure out an optimal percentage. What's the optimal percentage for us as school choice? For Deerfield, I think there's only one or two spots this coming year, so they're not, I mean, our, our school choice enrollment is dropping quite a bit. A lot of people, a lot of kids, well, at Frontier are moving on to tech school, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I know the Deerfield Elementary is like, we're down to two classrooms for all the grades after, I think, a year from now. Well, I think when I was last there, we only had one, did we? and then it's just progressively. This coming year, they're going to be down to yeah, two, down two to classes two. per grade. Yeah. Yep. And they came in, you know, a pretty low budget this year to help. And, uh, help us out, yeah. But I, I just think there's a lot. I think you know. so, and I think that, I, I mean, I've, 
I talked to finance committee people, but I've talked to finance committee people in some of the other towns, and they are concerned about the school choice um, numbers in their in their elementary schools, mm -hmm. and then that propagates on to the high schools. Sure. So I, I think it's worth having that discussion, and maybe like a joint discussion among all the yeah, towns. Yeah, I, 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 and I don't mean it as you know we got to find a criticism or you know, but yeah. I think we should look at the pros and cons of the whole system, and then what is optimal. You know what? What is? What are we shooting for? So, so my my point in raising this was not to have a debate about whether or not to, to have school choice or not, or what kind of numbers we should have. It was more to bring attention that there is a school choice account that has a million dollars in it that is getting carried over year to year and not being used for the benefit of the kids or the town. And that account is much greater it's, uh, than it has been historically. So it's just a fund that it seems to me if we're looking for twenty or thirty thousand um, dollars, and last year we were told that, that oh we're going to spend more of it this year, so it won't be you know over a million. Maybe we're going to you know if we're going to cut into it a lot because of the budget and the needs, etc. But it's not really clear that that's been done. It it so has, it seems like the real discussion is what's an appropriate amount of money to have socked away for emergencies. I, um, and right now you're looking at about, that's probably 20% of the whole school budget, which I, I would highly doubt any other town has that much in their school choice account year to year being carried over. David, I, I would recommend just touching base with Darius. That he, he does have a plan to use a lot of that, and we're using quite a bit to you know, try to get this school budget into a, a decent rate for the town. Um, there's, a, you know, there's a lot of projects that he's looking to spend that money on at the later half of the year. So I think you're gonna notice, I mean, I think we're all gonna look back longingly on these years in, in a little bit with, when that money just is starting to dwindle really fast, just looking at the trends and what he has planned to spend this year. But well, I'm I happy to have that conversation if I'm allowed to. Um, I will certainly do that because sure. part of what you're saying, Trevor, is what we were told last year as well. Yeah. Well, and, that's, and all, then, that's why it's the only reason I'm raising. And then to, I guess, in defense of that is that yes, that was the plan, and then it turned out there's a lot of money that came in over the last year that nobody was expecting, like the interest rates and. Uh, money on investments and you know the finishing up of the ESRA and all these other things just kind of came in it because we were looking at four and a half percent increase and we're at like one something now so a lot of that a lot of that is going to get used up but yeah I do I encourage you to talk to him about it because we I have had those same conversations and um, just talking with Shelly and Darius about it there a lot of that is going to get spent pretty quick and it would seem like if there is a million dollars in there, that they should be able to come up with twenty six four to to stay on track with the uh, flooring, flooring and um, and still not have it drop into our budget. Mm -hmm. So that's another place where they can spend some of that money. It is. Well, and why delay the flooring, which is only going to be more expensive if you put it off to the year? Exactly. Right. If they've got the money in the bank, why don't they spend it? Any more discussion on that? So one thing that's crossing my mind as, although I think we just resolved this, is that if we cut capital now so that we have $200,000 in free cash, when we get to fall town meeting, there's going to be some capital item that comes up that everybody's going to say that we want to spend money on. Um, and do we... This is just like a philosophy discussion, right? I don't know what it'll be, but if we do it at annual town meeting, then we have this big deliberation and we look at the capital compared to the operating expenses and we have this whole big discussion and the capital committee goes through and does a drinking and all that stuff and then we have the big discussion. If we go to it in the fall, and so, so what I'm thinking is like, say that the school committee actually has spent money out of that, that account and they don't have the 26,000 and they don't do the floor, when we get to the fall, there's going to be some, I don't know what it's going to be that we're going to buy. Um, culvert, say re culvert replacement. Okay. So in the fall, we replace a culvert. Um, is it, uh, should we say something like, 
let's make sure we go back and look at the capital listing that we already had um, from, because there's a bunch of stuff on it that we're not doing, right, that, that we've decided to wait. Does anybody have thoughts on this? I, I, that's what I would recommend, Julie. I, I, I think we kick stuff to the next year because we knew we didn't have very much money. So I, based on what we would generate in free cash for once it gets certified, and then we have our, towards our town meeting in the fall, I would like to revisit the capital. I think that's always what we do. It's kind of a, and I, stuff comes so up. So I was actually arguing the opposite. I think that we should, the barrier should be really high to do anything in the fall, and that if we've kicked it, we've kicked it. And next spring we visit it with the full amount of free cash not having spent it in the fall, but. What you're, what, what I feel like you're asking, I'm not sure, but is that if we, we're making these decisions now, but something we don't know about comes to right. us, we don't say, oh, okay, we'll do that, and then all the stuff that we deliver it The over. people like who went yeah. through the appropriate yeah. hoops and right. did what they were supposed right. to and didn't Basically, get approval. Yeah. Right. That, go ahead, Brenda, you were gonna say something. Well, I was just gonna say, um, I know that uh, there was a uh, energy rebate that the school got that had to go into the town's coffers, into the general fund. So I had suggested to them that if they needed to use that in the fall, that they might want to come to the town then and, and, and get it because it's about $22,000. Now with that said, I don't know that the school does any projects unless it's summertime, so they might just wait with everything till, mm -hmm. till the mm -hmm. following spring anyway. But um, that is out there. Okay. Yeah, I'm not suggesting we make a motion no, or anything, no, no. I'm just like, Talking philosophy. For philosophy, ahead, I agree that um, you know the annual town meeting is the place to do these things, and if we decide not to do them, then we should wait a year and you know have a good reason, uh, unless you know like this the, the ceiling of this building well, fell exactly. in. Yeah. You know. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. Uh, do do the capital stuff at the big annual town meeting, and there's got to be a good reason why we revisit this. I mean, we'd be in a lot better shape if we didn't have an $800,000 road damage thing that we have to deal with this year. So mm -hmm. we've been doom and gloom about a lot of things, but actually with the tragedy, the, the, the catastrophe that happened last year, we're not in bad shape in this particular budget. Yeah. Well, trends, that's a different story. Right. But if we didn't have that $800,000 we are trying to make up because the state didn't give us enough money, I think we'd be okay right now. I mean, yeah. for one year. <laughs> The, well, the, I don't know. Okay. If we're just talking philosophy, we, I mean, generally, I think that's the practice is like you do your stuff in the annual town meeting and then every town goes, okay, we get free cash certified in the fall. That's when we tackle stuff and that's when you spend free cash on one-time items. But, I mean, you, you can hold it to the next year, but a lot of times the year has happened and you're, you're at fall and you've, you've had some time to kind of figure out, but I agree, we should go back and like fund the things that are on the list and not just make up a new project that we want to tackle unless it's an emergency. But I feel like fall is usually where we, I mean, just from history, that's where we've done that. But I think in the fall, that's when we have a lot of projects that have different funding sources than free cash. You know, we'll have like CPC or, um, CPA funds, you know, like a, we'll, we'll buy a property from someone who passed away, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So um, I, I, don't, I don't know that we do a lot of spending out of free cash or capital stabilization in the fall. So I think that what you're proposing is very reasonable and something we can do. The, the grant cycles are either in the spring, mm -hmm. tend to be in the spring, or they tend to be in the fall. So sometimes so it is appropriate to support something in the fall because it's an opportunity to get a grant for like a match for a culvert. I mean, if, if we have a culvert out here on Bloody Brook that we can replace for 20% of the cost, it makes sense to match that 20% of, for the grant because we've identified the downtown here as a severe risk for flooding. So that is a good investment, but I, I think it's, it's, you have to evaluate every situation to see what, and, and you don't know, I mean, and by the fall, you started your fiscal year. Look what happened this year. We started the fiscal year, and we had 
more than $20 million worth of damage to our roads. And so we've been still working to try to fix what we can fix and um, stabilize what we can stabilize. And, and so, I mean, you really don't know what's going to happen for the tall. I mean, in general, I'm agreeing that we should keep our purchases and go through the process for the spring, but you honestly don't know what's happening through the year. One final thing to David's point. Um, if, if Darius has a plan for this money, he should share it with us. Um, at least give us broad indications of, oh, it's going to be 200000 that I'm going to spend, or it's going to be 300000 so this, this will be reduced to, you know, 15% of the school budget, um, and we'll have this 15% aside. Um, I don't, yeah, so I... I yeah, but I mean, he, sh he needs to share that with the Finance Committee and, and us, I mean, because if I'd known he had a million dollars, and we're talking about 26 Four for for flooring. Well, you have the money to pay for that, so you know, pay for it. Yeah, I think there's some confusion on all that, but yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, understand. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I think we. We I mean, all we're, need to have a we're all confused about what what Darius has got planned. I mean, does anybody here know what Darius has planned? It, yes. You do, but you you can you articulate it? Yeah, generally. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, again, a, a school doesn't have a a capital <coughs> capital. Um, Reserve fund. They don't have a, you know, they don't right. have any of these other tools that we have as a town to hang on to some money and plan for. It. And then, sure. yes, and and and, I, and, and I'm not criticizing state. anyone. I'm just saying. So each year, each year, we take money from from school choice to either help fund um, some sort of teacher or aids or something sure. to be able to fund that. Um, this year, I mean, we've been waiting for this axe to drop, as David said, for years and. This last year was just unknown that all this extra money was going to come from from different places to help to help you know relieve um, the issues that we've been under with this budget. But yeah, there's there's a lot of things that are coming up, and again, I don't have it on the top of my sure. plate. But I'll this was a request, a not a demand. Minutes, so just, I'll, I'll fill them in. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice if you shared the information. Yeah. In a written I, I, form. Well, he typically, you know, the idea is to come to the school committee meetings. That's right. really where it should be happening is that the town should come, the leaders should come, the finance committee should come to a school committee meeting and have sure. those conversations. Or get invited to come here. Let's invite them. Or they should invite yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. We should invite them. So when they gave us the budget, they pretty clearly lay out in the budget where everything's coming from. So right. you can see what's right. being spent from the different sources and everything. And that's very, very clear mm -hmm. when they give that to you. I think the one piece that they probably gave us, but I don't remember seeing, is the balance in those accounts mm -hmm. and um, sort of the, you know, the expected balance at, at some point at the end of the year or whatever. Right. Um, so that may be just the, the yeah. one piece that we're missing. Because I've been wondering, like, ESSER funds go away, and they've been spending ESSER funds, and I've, yeah, I, I think they're, they're, they're pretty disciplined. So I yeah. think they have a plan, and they know what they're going to do, and the ESSER funds are going to end, and they're going to move on. But mm -hmm. I can't articulate a, a dollar value in any of the funds or anything. So maybe that's the, the piece yep. of information that we feel like we're missing. I have a problem with we're trying to squeeze dollars out of the budget, capital improvements, and there's hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting there being unused. I think we need to use it. It's like a stabilization fund that's not being used. Well, we don't, we're not using all of ours either. Pardon? We're not using all of ours either, right? So, I mean, we have millions of dollars sitting that we're not spending, and we're trying to pull from 26000 from an operating budget. That's true. Right? So, I mean, it's, it's similar, but it's, it's a little different on a school department because they don't have as many accounts to do that but i think i'll talk to darius tonight i'll relay this and i'll say come lay out you know this this concern that the finance committee has well it's not just a finance committee i mean i i did it so i, I did well. intent you know I, I attended two um, frs meetings and there was mentions of million three um in in funds that they had set aside um, then they reduce that. So I'm just looking for a picture of mm -hmm. overall because the FRS budget and the DES budget are part of the omnibus budget that we're dealing with. And if they've got 
$2 million set aside between the two schools, you know, to understand what the philosophy is for that is, is a valuable thing. Mm -hmm. I think we, as a finance committee, we should know that. I think it's incumbent on us to know that. Yes. And, and I'm not even questioning that they probably have very valid plans. Right. You know, it's, it's not even an issue of that. Well, that, that is um, a source or a pot of money that continually gets reduced for them as well. Um, every year, the state gives less and less and less for school choice, which you know, I guess is indicative of our reduction of students. Yeah. Um, I did just get confirmation from, from um, Joshua <laughs> that there was just a little problem with the spreadsheet, but the $18,000 reduction that he presented to us last week is correct. So uh, we will vote that next week, uh, a reduction to this next budget. I have a can I, question. Can I just make one last comment about all that? Go ahead, David, and then Mark. Yeah, I just, I just want to say that the, the budgeting from the school committee is very good. And that, in fact, every year they do try to predict for whoever's reading the budget what's going to be used out of school choice, what's going to be put into school choice, and then what the prediction is for the school choice account balance at the end of the next year. And, and I think my, my only, not my only point, but the point that I'm also trying to raise here is that there, were, there have been predictions, I think, in the past couple of cycles that indeed we're spending it down, so we have to be careful, you know, instead of a million at the end of the year, we're going to have, you know, 800 or something. And I, so getting uh, back to the, the point made earlier, it's still high. Yes, maybe over the next three months before the end of the year, they're somehow going to spend a lot of that money. But I don't want to leave the impression that they're not, they're not, you know, as Travis said, the information is there in, in the budget. Um, it's just that it's not uh, really jiving at the end of the year with what they said at the beginning of the year. In other words, the trend wasn't as they said. And so my point is just, well, why is that? Uh, and do we really need to keep it that high every year? So, thanks. Mark? Um, I had a question about a completely different budget, and I'm, I'm not sure if we're done with the school stuff, but. Once we're done with the school stuff, could we talk about another one? David, do you want to reach out directly to probably Shelly Pareda and um, ask sure. the question and get the answer and maybe report back next week and we'll figure out what we need to do? I'd love to. Yeah. Does I that work? Trevor, Trevor okay. Okay. To or touch base with Trevor first. Yeah. Take okay. care. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks. All right. Go, Mark. Could we revisit yeah. town building maintenance account number 192-5400? Um, there was 13,000 that we actually recommended to increase in this budget yes. because there was some money that was left over. Um, and I, I think the concern uh, was that we didn't want to have like this massive shortfall that was, you know, where the budget would have to be increased again later. But mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we can get either the, thir the full 13K back or a portion of it from this budget. It was originally um, right. 93800 and then it increased to 106800 We uh, brought the miscellaneous repair line item back up to 25000 which is what we had been building it up to so that things would get done. Um, and Kevin had reduced it thinking he could use some of that capital, that $52,000 capital item for some of that work, which um, I think that request was pretty specific about certain things that he could use it on, like the soffits and the painting and around the windows, things like that. But um, the committee brought it back up to the 25,000, um, just giving you a little synopsis. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if anyone has any appetite for potentially, uh, I guess, for the him up on his offer. <laughs> What's that? Well, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'll say for just for the purposes of discussion, I'd like to make a motion to recommend um, for the um, budget item town building maintenance account number 192-5400 uh, 
um, in the amount of $93,800. I'll second it for purposes of discussion. Okay. And where is the reduction coming from in that motion? I'm sorry. It, it would be coming from, well, um, I don't think we need a motion to do it, but um, it would be coming from the miscellaneous repairs line item in that budget. Okay, I see it, yep. So you have both budgets, right? The the old one. Yeah. So the the old one was for ninety three thousand eight hundred, as presented by the department head, and then the finance committee recommended to raise that to one hundred six thousand eight hundred. <clears throat> and so, what was the miscellaneous repair line item in that final one that was approved? In the old one, it was twelve thousand. In the new one, it's twenty five thousand. Okay. We did. Yeah. We're rediscussing we it. The so I'm wondering if we should maybe go back down, knowing full well that this is going to have a huge swing the next year, but it might be good for us to have a little bit more free cash. So I just want to ask a question. If we, Margaret was looking to have 200000 in free cash. Mm -hmm. as, we, a, as a minimum. As a minimum. We've reached that. Are we creating a point where... We're going to change that number now, and we're going to shoot for 250000 I mean, I'm trying to figure out where the discussion's going. Have we reached the two hundred? I thought we were still short. I think we, we have 31000 including the flooring. So that it was at one sixty nine. so we should be at 200000 unless yeah. my math's wrong. Yeah. And especially if SCEMS comes down again, then exactly. we'll be in, in even a better position. And that might come down some more. And that might come down some more based on, you know, other, other discussions. I don't know. Okay. I mean, it has to go through three towns. Right, right. I know he met with Waitley today. Yeah. yeah. Or not their finance committee, but with Tricia. Yeah. I don't know. So, so anyway. can, can I ask a question? So if this stays where it is at the 106.8, can he still spend that other money and just not spend this full 25000 and then it, it would go it into free cash? And free then cash. Yeah, it would just roll over to free cash. So we can encourage him to go ahead and spend that other money rather than this. As long as it's for the item. For the, I mean, for the proper correct. thing. Yeah. yeah. Also assuming that he's here, but yeah. What's that? Also, assuming that he's here, I mean, there could be a, someone else that someone may else. want to change yeah. it. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I bring this up because I'm sure there will be other budgets that are going to go over, you know, so I think it may not be a bad idea for us to try and get a little bit extra. And then also, you know, it would allow us to maybe split the difference with the school if we, uh, you know, can't get them to pay for it out of school choice, the floors out of the school choice money entirely, you know, maybe. But that was agreed that they would either put it off, right? That's right. been Possibly, yeah. 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 Right. I'm just saying it gives us a little bit more of a go room. Maybe not necessarily for the school, it could be another budget, but um, yeah. I, I just don't feel like maintenance is, again, a good place to cut because uh, things happen unanticipated during the year and 25,000 is not that much for miscellaneous repairs, really. When you think about it, I mean, there's you. You got. We're going to be acquiring, uh, you know, St. James now, and and the parsonage. Um, we're moving forward with that, hopefully, but we are going to own it yes. for a little bit. I just yeah. wrote a check for it. Yeah, <laughs> and and it so it <laughs> better be bad. <laughs> I mean, you. So we're picking up more buildings and older ones and somewhat condition, you know, you don't, 25,000 just goes pretty fast for a municipality that has the amount of buildings that we have. And if he doesn't use it, it just rolls over into free cash. So I just feel like this is more realistic than and us arbitrarily cutting it. Because we never have enough, I, I think. Yeah. Any finance committee folks have thoughts on it? I know for many years we were uh, admonishing ourselves for not doing enough maintenance. 
So <clears throat> that went on for a number of years. It's only recently we've said, let's spend the money on maintenance instead of fixing up things later. Yep. I, I, I agree, John. David, do you have any thoughts? Um, no, just that now that I'm, I, I was sort of thinking it was all about the building you had to sit in, but now that <laughs> Carolyn has mentioned all the buildings that this covers, it, yeah. it, I guess it does sound like it could get eaten up pretty quickly over a course of a year. So his argument wasn't that he would spend less on maintenance. His argument was that he had another pot of funds that he could use to fund specific maintenance items because it's allocated only for specific things. So he could spend part of this could come from a different account that is not within the budget. So the budget, so what would happen is this year the budget would drop 13,000. Next year he would have spent that other money and the budget would be popping back up. So we'll see the 13,000 increase next year rather than this year. I see. So in other words, but, there's, there's $38,000 in this lineup, really? No, there's 25 in it. If you look at the old budget, he had it cut down to 12. Okay. So I, I, I guess what I'm, what I'm proposing isn't actually a cut. It's just proposing what he had originally budgeted. Um, but yeah. I, we, go ahead. I would, yeah, or maybe something in between. But the we agree, we had talked about just leaving it steady so that kind of so that it wasn't bouncing around exactly. from year to year. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I think when we're talking about new buildings and repairs, we should not include the Catholic Church because I think anything that's done there would be capital. It's not going to. It's not being used, so it's not going to break. Yeah, but it, there could be little things that cost, I don't know. Yeah, I suppose a pipe could freeze, something like yeah. that, maybe. Yeah, it's possible. Well, some stuff will be, I think something like that would be covered by insurance, but, uh, I mean, you could have the cost of securing the building, cost of draining the building, whatever. I, I, I don't even know, John, but the door could not open, and we Water. have to water yeah okay all right yeah i mean there are you're right you're right yeah it doesn't take i mean if you think of your own home and then kind of what what you would do in your repairs during the course of a year i mean i don't know any other thoughts on this or discussion i'm kind of <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know what I think yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, could, I, yeah. I, I didn't initially really see it as a, or when I made the motion, I mean, I, not, not as a cut, but just taking them up on his offer. You know, if, right. there, if there's another pot right. there, then, I mean. I, and they, it does it help the with the operational, the, the issue with having so much of free cash go to support the operational, because this takes money out of operational. Um, Go ahead, John. What happens to the, I guess Brenda, what happens to the capital that he could tap into if he doesn't use it? Well, if, if, it, if it's eventually determined that we're not going to spend that money, we just it'd go into free cash. Not, so, not the, you're talking about the we're other. We're talking about the 52,000. That's, it's a capital line item that was done a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. We haven't spent any money out of it yet. But it was for some pretty specific things. I don't know if Casey would remember what they are, but I thought I thought it was like painting and soffits and you know things like that. So there was some stuff that's rotting that yeah, you know. There was a specific, but we don't want to invest a huge amount of money were. into this building if we're going to eventually take it down. If that's the plan. So <laughs> when would that capital fund revert back to free cash? when we decide that it needs to. I mean, it, it basically stays there as long as <laughs> well, that's collectively funny. people think that it's going to be spent. Does that have to happen at town meeting or? Yeah, no, no, no it's, it's something, okay. it's a year end process. Usually Casey and I go through all those numbers and make a decision. And it's usually based on conversations with the select board, conversations with Kevin, you know, various people that are involved. Well then for like transparency, wouldn't it be better to leave the 25,000 here 
and revert that account back to free cash so that you have the, this in the operating budget. If, if we go forward with the 1888 building and that plan is solid, then, then that makes that sense. Brenda would roll it over. Yep. But, you know, that plan isn't as far along as we want it to. So in the meantime, this building is falling apart. There's rotting happening, and you have to replace things. And mm -hmm. heating, you can't, you know, it's 82 degrees in Brenda's office today. And, you know, I mean, we have stuff that this building isn't worth really investing. But on the other hand, Brenda can't work when it's, you know, 100 degrees. It makes it a little hard. I get yeah. things. <laughs> I, I mean, so there are some things that have to get fixed. So, um, I did that. So now I'm going to understand that there's an account with $50,000 for sort of capital related to town buildings that hasn't been spent that was budgeted a year or maybe more than a year ago? It Correct. was budgeted for the municipal offices, David. Yeah. And it's for specific things related to the office. Right. And when was that done? I want to say it was 20. Two, That's what I'm thinking. I think it was two years so, ago, but maybe it was. It could so have been I'm, three years ago. And then, so things. I guess I'm now uh, jumping on what Beth says and sort of supporting that idea that if if something was budgeted to get done in a year and it didn't get done for whatever reason, then then for some transparency, why aren't we starting again? Because it's not budgeted to get done in a year. It was budgeted, these were capital items that were identified when they were evaluating the building. There were things that they noticed needed to be repaired. And when we did appropriate this money, this was money left over from the sale of the Old Town Hall, right Brenda? Yeah, correct. This was money sitting in an account that when we looked at this information at the time, we, need, we knew we needed to do repairs to the building. There were repairs that were identified by a company that came in and assessed the buildings. And maybe I don't know all of the background on that assessment, actually, really might. But essentially, they came in and they assessed the buildings and they said, okay, each building has certain repairs it needs to happen. One thing that we were concerned about was the municipal offices because we use the municipal offices all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we asked town meeting to approve this $52,000 to start doing some of those repairs. A couple of things happened that kept us from starting that work. And then the 1888 building came up. And at one point, it became a question of do we move ahead with anything or do we wait to see what's going to happen with the 1888 building? Because some of these repairs are pretty significant. Um, so there, there's a, a background in how, how and when to get them done based on other goals that were in front of us. It sounds like now we're in the question again whether or not we're going to go ahead with those original things that we thought we were putting that money aside for. So I guess I'm, and there's a natural tension here, I get it, like the managers of the town, you want to um, get monies ready, you want to take care of things, you want to you know, plan ahead, which totally makes sense. And then we've got this oversight body of the Finance Committee, which is just trying to kind of uh, make things as, I guess, transparent and, and clear as possible. So I'm just struck by, again, we have another account that's sitting there uh, that hasn't been used for its intended purposes. Why wouldn't it, at a certain point, go back into, back into free cash, and then when we want to do these maintenance projects, come back and do them? Because right now it's clear that they're not scheduled and they're not planned. No, that's and it's another major. Anyway, that's just what I think I heard, but Trevor has an answer. So uh, there's a lot of things, like John is working on getting the front painted. You know, we were looking at the windows in the front to try and cool the, that side of the building down. There's a lot of things that are planned, but I think what, I think what the public doesn't realize is that there is not enough staff to do all this stuff and everything gets flown in 
that's a hot potato one day and then a hot potato the next day, it's hard to manage all the stuff that happens day to day for this staff in, this, in these offices. So we have good intention to get started on that stuff, but without a, without a general maintenance person from DPW or something like that to, to like champion this, our chief of police does it. So you know, he lines up to get painting done and all that stuff because we just don't have enough staff to really sit down with a, with a yellow pad of paper and go, these are the five things that are gonna happen. And, and we're working on them, we've got them listed, but then, you know, weather's miserable and, you know, you're trying to get a sub in and, and then, you know, you have your day job to do. And so it's really, it's, uh, this money was put into this account to use up when we needed it and it will go pretty quick. But, we, you know, we use it when the, we have plumbing issues going on, we need bring in a plumber to do something in the bathrooms or, so things are starting to happen and we do have a plan for it, but it's really comes down to capacity and everybody is just, especially after this summer, just totally burnt out, you know, to kind of, okay, let's tackle this again, but to roll that back into free cash and then to go and pull it back out again, that's staff time too, of like writing the Warren article and doing all that stuff, instead of just having it sit there for a little bit till we can, catch our breath and get it done. I, that's the way I see it a little bit. No, I, I get that, and, I'm not, and nobody, I don't, nobody's faulting, like, no, or criticizing, saying, agree. why isn't it done, or it should have been done. Yep. But I guess I, it's just that concept of, it wasn't done, yep. um, as it was budgeted to be done in a certain time period, then shouldn't we, you know, throw it back in and, and, and start again. No, let's just ask, let's get it on the calendar and get it done. Let's, let's that, fund somebody. That would be great too, again, but I wasn't, it wasn't really hearing that all the 52 grand of projects are still the projects that are being planned. Yeah. But maybe I misheard that. No, they are, they, there are projects planned. There's probably not 52,000 planned, but I think it's just, it, Again, it takes a lot of work to put it back into free cash, then to pull it back out, write those articles. It's just, it's and just part of it is dependent ground. on the decision of what happens to the people who are working in this building, whether we come up with another place for them to go and this building comes down or we decide we're staying here and, and dig into True. those repairs. And that process is taking a long time yeah. to yeah. get through. <laughs> Can, let, let's go back to um, talking about the, the motion that we have on the table, which is to take town building maintenance down to 93,800. Um, I think it's not a um, it's not a decision of not doing the maintenance. It's a decision of where the funding for that maintenance comes mm -hmm. from and whether we want this, this budget to dip down this year and then deal with that next year. Um, does anybody mm -hmm. else have thoughts on just that part of it? Go ahead, Mark. I think that we can probably do both. I don't know that the two are mutually, mutually exclusive. I think we have an opportunity where we can self-select and do some of that maintenance both out of the budget but with money that we're pulling to put into that budget. Um, it may not work out that way, but it could work out that way. Um, that's kind of part of what uh, Kevin had pitched. So um, that's the last thing I wanted to say about that. So normally if we were changing somebody's budget, we would go back to that person and make sure that they were cool with it. Um, he proposed this when we first started. Um, do we think we need to reach back out to him to check? Could I ask a, one more question? Yeah, go ahead. What other, um, for this line item, what other, I know this has been asked and answered before, but what other buildings does it support the miscellaneous uh, maintenance? The 1888 building, the library here, the police station, church. Well, the church and EMS come out of their own separate line items, but the new church, the new church. you're right, would, would come out of this unless we set up a, a separate line item for that. The parsonage. Um, no, that's quite a few buildings. Really. It is. Town Highway comes out of its own, the <laughs> Town Highway, highway yep. Garage, yep. Yep. not out of this. Correct. What about, I mean, this says buildings, but so like, what about the maintenance of like the like the shed or any of the outbuildings around here? So, it includes that too. Yeah. Yeah. One needs a paint job. <laughs> and, and okay, so 
So, so for example, a paint job on an, uh, one of those outbuildings, is that money, the other money able to be used for it? Yeah. You guys are disagreeing. What other, what other money? No. The, what are you the, talking the 50, about? The 54,000. Yeah, 54, 000. 000. 54, yeah. 000. Yeah. That's, That's for only this for this building, yes. to nothing, nothing else. Correct. Which is why he didn't take it down to zero. He took it down to 12,000 thinking some of that would be other. So. You know, and, there, and there's, there's things in this line item that I don't know that I would necessarily call miscellaneous repairs, but there's no other place to put it. Like, um, we pay a monthly bill to get rid of the mice and other rodents in the library, um, you know, that comes out of this line item. So it, it gets used. Um, Question? Yes. Can you give us a ballpark of how much has been spent this year? <laughs> on, I was on just thinking about that. You know what, I, I have to say I did do the month end reports. I haven't sent them to you yet because I have um, Sarah reconciled cash early and I can get you a better number for STEMs, so I was waiting to send it all to you at the same time. But I could go grab that report and I could tell you how much has been spent so far this year. Okay. And, and Brenda, just before you leave, I just wanted to, well, maybe the fin finance committee can tell me as well. I understood Kevin to say that he basically went in and decimated his budget because yes. he thought we needed money. Yes. And he wouldn't have done that if he had been thinking a different way. And so I just want to remind folks that, that he wasn't, necessarily doing what was best for the town. He was doing what he thought he was asked to do. Well, it does sound to me like the other, I don't know what you call it, the other, the fund. other, the yeah. other fund of money sounds more like, almost like a capital kind of thing. Like it's, it's for specific repairs. And this is the operating budget for miscellaneous repairs. I, I guess I'm hesitant okay. to reduce it to, to like, that's how I feel about this one. Can I comment? Go ahead, John. Isn't it basically for two buildings, the 1888 or 81 building in here? And the library. Well, yeah, but we're going to have a, well. The library, well, guess, the, the library, library point, the St. James, and the parsonage. Yeah, but they're not going to be used. I mean, there might be some maintenance, but it's not going to be very much. I but you still have trouble fathoming it's going to spend a lot of money on maintenance in a building that's vacant. Yeah. So we've had, you know, we've had some other costs this year. Like I think there was a urinal that had to be fixed here in the building. Um, the bathroom locks didn't work. Well, the bathroom work. never locks. locks. That still needs to be fixed. <laughs> um, but we've spent seventeen thousand dollars so far. Okay. And Just on a, a lot of miscellaneous, miscellaneous stuff. Repairs. Plus, plus the urinal I think was maybe a little bit more expensive. That's pretty much on track for twenty-five thousand if it continues like that. Yeah. Rough, yes. Roughly. And right. what was that? What was that electrical thing that they were working on a month ago? Uh, fire suppression, or uh, it was right this, this panel out here. There were guys here three or four days. Yes, yes, they were. I don't know that I've seen a bill for that yet. And it was the fire alarm system. Yeah, that's what I was. The um, entire panel needed to be replaced. Right. So I'd, and, I'd like to go ahead and like let's let's move along. Is anybody else other than what the repairs are for? Does anybody else have comments on where the money should come from? David, any thoughts? It sounds like we're no. Um, you guys ready to vote, or do you want to talk about it more? You ready to vote? Okay, let's do a roll call vote. John, why don't you start? Um, I approve Mark's motion to okay. reduce it. Uh, Mark Brennan, I. Beth Round, no. Julie Chalfant, no. <laughs> It's all up to you. Go, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm not privy, I don't think, to the initial presentation. Um, and I'm somewhat struck now by um, what Tim said about that. And this money is still going to be available. So I'm sorry, it's my thought process. So I'm actually going to go no. A sharp no. Okay, so that vote is two three zero. That does not pass. So for clarity, it stays at one zero six eight, right? Right. Um, the assessors came to me and said that they were willing to um, release of of the carry forward that we carry every year. They were willing to release about six thousand of that this year and not carry that over. 
but your comment during the meeting that they were here, which made perfect sense, is to leave your budget as it is at the 22,000, and we'll let that 6,000 at the end of the year roll into free cash, but then keep their certification line item the same. That's, that's, that's for the quinquennial <coughs> certification. Which keeps the budget from doing this, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. So steady, I, I so told that them that I would accept the lower amount to carry forward so that it rolls into free cash at the end of the year, but to leave that budget as it is. Okay. So that was another thought, but um, I just wanted to it's throw it out there. It's kind of the same that, thought process. Though. Exactly, yes. Any other specific budget line items? I had hoped to get to the warrant, but we've got 12 minutes left, <laughs> so um, next week's going to be a doozy. Maybe we need two meetings. Oh, we're going to have two meetings anyway, aren't we? Yeah. 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 So is the, um, when is the review? The 18th. The 18th. The 18th. The, the, the whatever, the information session. Yeah, the 18th. The 18th. At 6? Yes, that okay. is correct. Okay. Um, we meet Tuesday of, next week, right? What's that? We meet Tuesday next week, is that we correct? We meet Tuesday next week at 5 p.m. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that we have time to do any. Can I ask a question, Julie? Go for it. Brenda, and um, sh should I, should, do, are we presented with data, and I'm sure we are because we present us all kinds of great data, um, that shows us all of these pots of money that the town has? So for instance, this $52,000 that we're hearing was allocated for the town you know, maintenance, which, or maybe it was capital. Yes. Is that in some line item or is it part of a bigger line item for capital approved um, it, it is expenses. on a, uh, the report that you get for the expenditures groups it all together so it's included with the sidewalks and I'm well I'm not sure if it's included with sidewalks but um, um, there's a few accounts that are all yes the uh, no the church building repairs the uh, scams exhaust system the municipal office repairs and the senior needs, uh, senior center needs assessment feasibility study and the church feasibility study are all capital line items within the, um, the same category. So on your report, it would combine all of those together. And is that on the statement of change in fund to balance report? No, no, that's, that's on your um, general fund expenditure report because those were all those were all uh, capital items that came out of free cash um, when they were voted. Like the church feasibility study was done in 2019. Uh, that would have been um, at the April 2018 meeting. Um, and then you have several of these are from 2022, which would have been from the April 21 meeting. And then uh, the police, police HVAC is in there also. So anything having to do with buildings um, is, is uh, capital items are, are lumped into that one item for you. Okay. <clears throat> I have a detailed report that I do for my own purposes and for Casey. Um, and I know Trevor likes to look at it, but it's a lot of detail that isn't real easy to understand what part, what is part of what appropriation. I can start to add that to your your uh, reports, um, but it might be kind of confusing for you. Yeah, I guess I was just trying to figure out. So, and there are monies that are carried over year to year that don't automatically go back into free cash. Absolutely, there's always and, and monies. I'm just trying to figure out how to isolate those in a. In well, they they are separate articles, and those separate articles can be carried forward, and that is a decision that's not taken lightly. It's something that. Um, that uh, Casey and I go through in detail at the end of the year and there are certain departments that will say I intend to spend this please keep this to going forward and so um, all of those things are taken into account when I close the books for the year. 
Thanks. So if I, it's in the all department's expenditure report. Is that where it is? Yeah. And if I, so I'm looking at 192 public buildings, yes. 5,800 capital expenses total. Yes. Is that, that the right? That's correct. Line? Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's a whole bunch of things you said. Yes. It's like five or six of them right now. What number is that, Brenda? Um, 192. 5,400. 50, uh, 5,800. 5,800. Yeah. So it's not, a, it's not like capital. a budget. There's no budget sheet for it. It was a capital item for right. four. All right. It's a separately voted line item from um, each of these uh, from town meetings. But if you look at the monthly report that she gives us um, of expenditures, it's going to be in there. On your monthly report, John. I don't have it. Yeah. You would, yeah. The last one you had was from February. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we're really out of time. <laughs> it did happen successfully used up our last few minutes. Um, anything else? Does everybody have a copy of the warrant? Is it the one? Yeah. I just, I don't know, we got so many, I don't know if I have one. Yeah. I, I have one like that. There was tiny. one handed out last week at the meeting oh. and then oh. we didn't go through it. I, I don't have here. that one. Oh, you don't have that? Well, I probably have something here for you too, Mark. Um, okay. I can um, fix that one. I, I probably have it in my stack. <clears throat> One thing that would be helpful on these, and maybe it's there, uh, it probably is, like on page 3 of 14, um, the one I, most recent one I have is 4-3-2024. Um, is it only on the secondary pages? Like it's not on the first page. Oh, yeah, more than point. mine. Mine's yeah. 326. No, mine says 322. This yeah, mine says 4 3 24 on the second page. Oh. So. Yeah. That must be the one that Casey gave us last week. Mine says 322. Mine's 322. If I print it, will you take it with you? Because <laughs> I actually have one printed. So I can make copies for you. You can take it with you. Do you guys want it tonight? You want it? Oh, that'd be great. Good yes, awesome. please. Yeah, I think that's Thank a great you. idea. Okay, so we're going to take it. We're all going to promise to read it before next week, and next week we're going to motor through the warrant, and we're going to vote skims because that number is going to change. And okay. we're going to look at a summary of where we are, okay. which I'll draw up with, like, where we think we are with free cash and all that. That's the plan for next week. We're going to start at 5 o'clock on Tuesday, whatever Tuesday is. 16th and then the 18th will be a public information session we are not scheduled to meet on the 22nd because that's Passover so if we don't get through the whole warrant next Tuesday we will be scheduling another meeting sometime if we can ever find a day that at least a quorum of us are available are we good with that anybody want to adjourn motion to adjourn Second. Yes. Roll call vote. I don't know. I, John Pereski, I. Mark Brennan, I. Beth Brown, I. Julie Chalf, and I. Dave Sharp, I. All right, we adjourned at 5.55 p.m. David, are you coming here for personnel or are you doing that remote? I, was, I think they're almost always remote. Everybody's remote. Okay, because I, I have a pile of papers for you. That's why I was wondering. Oh. Uh, you could, if Julie would be so kind, you could uh, oh, yeah, I can bring give it. it to Julie. Yeah, okay. Um, are we, yeah. Do we have to do anything? Um, before we do that, I just want to thank the Finance Committee. I, you guys work incredibly hard on this stuff, and uh, every year I learn something, so every meeting I learn something, so thank you. And I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Oh, Carolyn yeah. Nassai. Tamil G.I. Reporting stopped.